I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us for another visit. And today we're really pleased to have Jana Page here. Thanks, Thank Jana, for coming. And Thank you, I Earl. guess I might just say, if, if it's appropriate, to, to say I interviewed Elaine Hefner, who is Jana's mom. She was actually my very first interview about, believe it or not, about six years ago, mm -hmm. or five or six years ago. So. You're her daughter and... Mm -hmm. Her and youngest that, daughter. Her yeah. youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. How many daughters did you... How many sisters did you... I have two sisters, so two three sisters. altogether and four brothers. Okay. So big Mormon family. Yeah. <laughs> now, your sister, you also had a sister that passed? Yes, very recently in May. That mm -hmm. was Heidi. Mm -hmm. And she passed from, from cancer. Yes. And uh, where was she in the... You were the youngest and... I was the youngest girl. She was the second oldest oh, okay. daughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sure nice to have you here. Thank you. It's you nice to be here. You have such an interesting story. <laughs> and of course, we've already inter introduced Mom a little bit and right. Dad, and he was mm -hmm. Bishop in your ward. He you was. Do you remember that time? No, I was quite young. I was maybe two or younger when that happened. They so always talk about Bishop's kids and stuff. Yeah. Did you? But he was always called Bis Bishop Whitman. So that's, was he? Oh, Even yeah. Even after oh, uh, yeah. when you were growing up? and mm -hmm. So you were born in the church, I guess? Yes. And, very mm -hmm. active. Where was that at? Uh, we grew up in Magna, Utah. Oh, okay. So out on the west side. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that, that's where you spent your youth, did you? Uh, yeah. My, um, we left Magna probably when I was 15 or 16. Oh. Um, after my parents divorced when I was 12. Oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. And then And then my mom moved us out after she remarried. Okay. Um, did she remain active? Um, in the church? Yeah, you know, she was, I think, very discontented and had some doubts. Um, but she remained fairly active until she started dating her current husband, who was a Christian. Mm -hmm. And he sort of started showing her, other showing <laughs> her the truth. And um, so then it, it, she slowly, you know, backed, mm -hmm. backed out. But she was very active, very, um, very involved with the music um, in the stake and in the ward. Yeah. Um, we, uh, I always thought she, we had the best ward choir yeah. in the state, so <laughs> she was very talented. And you were active in young women and all that stuff. Very and, much so. I yeah. was. Um, I had a lot of rebellious brothers and sisters, um, <laughs> and I was. I always, you know, liked church. I I wanted. I I felt like there was a relationship with God that I had, hmm. um, and. So I always wanted to please him, and I thought going to church and doing the right things was, was the thing that, to do to, to please God. Yeah. So how old were you when, when your mom remarried? Uh, I wasn't quite driving, so I think I was about 15 when, mm. she re when she remarried. So you kind of remember her time when she was questioning the church? Did that come up to you at all? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, she would, you know, thinking back on, on it, I would say that there were a lot of seeds planted. Mm -hmm. um, she would kind of say things to me, um, you know, things about the temple um, ceremonies, how closely they were related to um, masonry, oh, um, <laughs> things like that. Even though I didn't quite understand what that was, it just was something that was planted. And then sort of later down the road, I think we'll get into um, kind of blossomed and, you know, opened my eyes a little bit more. Yeah. But, you know, I think she was, um, you know, she was one that always said, it's more important who you marry than where you marry. And that was quite the opposite of what the church was saying. It's more important where, where you marry you rather than who you marry. And so she was always kind of a rebel in that case. Um, which Even before her divorce? I would Maybe. say so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just... She realized what was more important, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah, and, and, and living a life where you're 
quote unquote checking all the boxes doesn't always produce happiness and joy yeah. and peace. And yeah. she w tried that way, and it just was not, you know, it wasn't producing joy and happiness in Christ. And yeah, we learn that, don't we, as we yeah. get on with our lives here. Yeah. Well, interestingly, you were on the uh, seminary council. Yes, I actually went up to Skyline. So uh -huh. there was long story, but we there was about sixty kids from Brockbank that was the junior high in in Magna uh -huh. went up to Wasatch, and there was such a considerable difference in the learning environment up there that I decided to stay, and I stayed at Skyline, where all oh. the rest of my neighborhood friends went back to Cyprus. Oh. Um, so I went to Skyline, and my senior year I was um, chosen to be on the. Um, seminary Institute or the Seminary Cal Council, Council. Um, which was something I really enjoyed and yeah. um, so and they don't pick those people at random those are pretty well screened I think is, yeah yeah and, and I and it was something that I wanted to be on it was yeah. um, it was it was a wonderful opportunity yeah. and so, so you felt like you had a good strong testimony of oh absolutely I, I read or? the Book of Mormon for the first time um, in high school mm. and definitely had the burning in the bosom <laughs> feeling that, you know, they talk about. And yeah. um, I found the Book of Mormon to be um, very inspiring and, um, you know, almost just, heroic. Just true, right? Yeah. Just, and just so true. it couldn't, you know, it had to be true. And <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, I was, I was all in for sure. Wow. Did baptisms for the dead. and I did, yes, yeah. which was interesting. But what do you remember about that? I just remember the big oxen, yeah. you know, we were kind of waiting in line for a long time because, you know, the kids would do so many. 10 or 20 and then they would get out. Right. Um, so you're standing in the basement and w looking at these big oxen. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. So you uh, go through high school and mm -hmm. active and... Well, and I'll, I'll say one thing. So, you know, another seed that was planted and I believe it was... A seed that was planted in high school was I remember um, uh, my seminary teacher had had mentioned um, that you know we can be gods one day, mm. and I thought what? And I remember turning to the kid next to me, I'll leave his name out, but in seminary, I, in, in seminary, yeah. and saying that's not true. We don't believe that. And he said, well, yeah, we do. And I remember then the seminary teacher saying, well, we don't talk about it a whole lot. And I just thought that is really strange but I didn't really it just was something that I kept to myself I didn't ask anybody about it but I thought huh I don't know if I want to be a god that's what I remember <laughs> thinking you know and so anyway so just another seed that was planted well it's interesting and you were sharing kind of your story with me earlier and and you mentioned these seeds that were planted and I, I wrote those down because they I, and let's let's go ahead and go through those sure. because they're just so interesting you mentioned the one about masonry mm -hmm. the temple and mm -hmm. Uh, and that just, it just kind of sits in the back of your mind, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you think, okay, so then later when you learn about it, then it, right. oh boy, that, that is true. Yeah. One about big business. Yeah, I remember my sister saying that, that, you know, I think there was a Time Magazine article that came out that Mormon there Inc. was, yeah, that's And right. she had said something like that, and, and I was like, well, that's not true. We give, Mormons give tons of money to the poor and, yeah. and, and, and they do, but they, there also is an undercurrent of great wealth yeah. uh, with the church. And a, and a lot of pride in what yes. they do. do. Yes. Um, you mentioned becoming gods, mm -hmm. being baptized at eight. Did that strike you too? That always bothered me. No, I hadn't really thought about it until oh. I got into college and a, a Christian teammate had, um, said, well, you know, I think she used the C word, cult, <laughs> when de defining Mormonism. And, and she said, well, you know, a cult would require that an eight-year-old who doesn't know anything be baptized into a, you know, a yeah. church to be a member. Yeah. And so, again, that was just another, you know, seed that was planted in college. Well, it always bothered me, even before I became a, a Christian, but... Uh, as a member of the church, I kept thinking, well, these kids don't really know. They're just mm -hmm. joining the church. They really don't know. But the idea is that they'll be taught by their parents and come to know. Well, and another thing, when I said my mom was kind of a rebel, she always said, you will not get up and bear your testimony as a small child because you don't know. 
And until you know, then you can go up there. And I'm not going up there and whispering in your ear what to say. To, so to parrot what I say, she yeah, wants you to be able so to stand up there. So she was very there. much um, against that type of parenting. It's and almost she, hypocrisy, isn't it? In a way, because you're saying something you don't know, yeah. and yeah, that's interesting. And she was fine with us bearing our testimony, but we had to have a testimony. We just couldn't go up there as four, five, six-year-olds. <laughs> saying the you know the routine things that those yeah. kids say so. and again i'm not sure where these came along in your story <laughs> but you you mentioned pushing being pushed in marriage yeah that was more in in college um okay. you know going to the institute um classes and you're getting and going older to, on you need yeah, to get married and going to um you know uh the ward at the near the u yeah. and it just seemed like every service was about marriage and preparing for marriage and my grandfather bless his soul <laughs> love him to death i mean he was on his deathbed and he said make sure you marry a good mormon bo missionary return missionary return missionary and i was like 15 at the time and i was like what <laughs> you know that okay okay grandpa <laughs> you know whatever you say and so it just it just seemed like marriage was look. really pushed hard yeah. and i didn't I, so i was getting a little bit discouraged in college and i had some christian teammates that Maybe they sensed it. I, I'm not sure, but you know, they they would say things again. More p seeds planted, and and one of them actually invited me to a Bible study where I saw a number of Christian athletes just studying the Bible, just talking about the Bible, reading the Bible. Had never seen that before. I mean, in Mormonism, they give you a pamphlet and you have to read it and ans ask the questions that are in the pamphlet and right. and the and the study guides and. And it was just so refreshing to see these athletes at the U have a genuine love and um, desire to read this, the Bible and to know who God is. Yeah. So it really kind of turned on a light for me. And, um, and then I had a teammate, another seed that was planted was, she said the dreaded, well, Mormons don't believe in the same Jesus Christ that or a different, they believe in a different Jesus That's Christ. That's a big, big. And that one just, <laughs> just drove me nuts. And I, and so I thought, well, okay, why are they saying this? Yeah. So then when my one teammate um, invited me to church, I took her up on it and I said, okay, I want to know why you guys think that we believe in a different Jesus Christ. And, and you we'll, went to church with her? And I went to church with her. Okay. And um, yeah. it was at Capital Christian up by the U. Oh yeah, and it, uh, Doug Ose was the the pastor at the time, and it was like God had lifted the blinders off my eyes, and I could not get enough of the Bible, and I would take all these notes, and and even at my baptism, um, Doug said he, she scared me because she was taking all these notes in my service. <laughs> what's, she, what's she gonna say or yeah. use them for? <laughs> but I would, I would go home to my apartment and I would read and, and go over the notes that I took and read more and I just, it was amazing um, transformation of what God was showing me that this is the truth. And you had not, as I hadn't, you hadn't experienced that in Mormonism, right? No, I mean it was always just stories of missionaries and prophets and modern-day prophets yeah. and modern-day apostles and missionaries and you know anecdotal Keeping the stories. the Sabbath day holy and tithing and just yeah. on and on. It was it's just stories just... about themselves and glorifying yourselves and and you can do it and pick yourselves up from the bootstraps and yeah. um, and 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 just it glorification of your of yourself really and you you know if you work hard enough you can do it, you can be righteous. And whereas it was a completely different message in the Christian church. Yeah, when you go there, it's just all about... God. God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it was all a... Uh, I mean, there were things that made me uncomfortable at first. The going music, to the, maybe, or the... The, <laughs> the music, I thought, oh, this is so irreverent and disrespectful to God. and Because yeah. we had people clapping and... Raising, raising their hands, their hands and, and, and some people, some ladies were had a tambourine. I mean, it's just oh. it was, <laughs> it was different. But it was um, I, it would, took a long time, but I learned to love it and understand why they were doing it. I mean, people lose their ever living minds at football games, at yeah. BYU yeah. football games. Well, for sure. Yet, you yeah. know, yeah. they can't be, you know, glorifying God in a in a celebratory way right. that um, that Christians do. 
And it's just, there's such a freedom too. Yeah. And they're there because they want to be there and there's a joy mm -hmm. and uh, it's their choice. Well, one thing that kind of really put that last seed or maybe it wasn't the last one, but another seed that was planted was polygamy. Yeah, so <laughs> so in this time that I had was sort of, I was going to the Mormon church in the afternoon and the Christian church in the morning. And How long did you do that? Oh, a few months, I, probably three or four months, and then I... Could you really see differences? Oh, though, huh? absolutely, yeah. 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 And so when I was in an insti institute class, um, the topic of polygamy came up, and they said, you know, well, we don't practice it, but we still believe in it, although we don't practice it. And I thought, what? <laughs> what does that mean, yeah. you know? And I just, and so I went to my mom, although I knew what she was going to tell me. Right. And I went to my dad, Bishop Whitman, and okay. uh, I just said, you know, what is this? And, you know, he gave me the canned answer. Well, there's more righteous women on earth than men, and we need, you know, and I just didn't buy it. I said, this is so not what Christ is all about. And yeah. so anyway, that was kind of the, the nail in the coffin. Yeah. And I, I was out, <laughs> you know, and then I just stopped going to church and at the Mormon church. Yeah. And then... Now, we know that some people have a difficulty transitioning into a Christian mm -hmm. Jesus and Christian God. I guess they, if the only true church isn't true, mm -hmm. then they just give up on everything. You were able to make a transition to God or stay with Him. Yeah, I mean, I always felt a strong connection uh, that there was, a, you know, a, a God in heaven. Um, so it, that didn't really scare me. I think... I think I, you know, looking back on it, I probably had it easier because I wasn't still in my home ward where I was known as a Mormon. I was kind yeah, of I moved that around. that was interesting that you said that because it kind of made it a little easier for you to... Yeah, I, w I was in, up at college and yeah. sort of transitioned out of that environment where I wasn't with people I had known for, you know, my my life, um, all my life. So it was a little easier. So I feel for Mormons who are you know, questioning and having doubts, and they're still with the people that, you know, their neighbors and the people that they love, and, and it's very difficult to break away. And friends, yeah. You know. Now, you've always had a special relationship with, with God, it sounded like, and I don't know if we <laughs> covered this here. Did you ever talk, did you talk about the bishop? In, oh, in high it? school. Yeah, yeah. In high so school. one of the, <laughs> another seed that was sort of planted in, I really had to um, get over it. It took a while to get over it, but <laughs> In one of the bishop interviews, he, and I really liked this bishop. It yeah. wasn't like I didn't like him, but he had asked me when I was in high school if I prayed. And I said, well, yeah, I pray all the time. I pray in the car. I pray in school. You talk to God. Is I, that what yeah, you mean? I talk you to God. Talk yeah, to I God. pray all the time. And, he, and I said, but do I kneel at my bedside and pray every morning and every night? No, but I have a prayer in my heart, and I just feel very close. My walk with God is very close. And he sort of chastised me and said, you know, you should be praying, kneeling at your bed. This should be the altar that you, you kneel at. And, and he was basically telling me I was praying wrong. And I just <laughs> thought, this is nuts. I, I ha I'm telling this guy I have a personal relationship or I feel like I have a personal yeah. relationship with, with God. And yeah. he's telling me it's wrong. And <laughs> so bless his heart. It took me a long time to get over that. But it is what it is, and yeah. and um, God is faithful. And so, tell us how you transitioned. Then, even more so, you tell so, us about that. So, in college, um, you know, I, I was done with Mormonism. I just said this is not right. Um, so, I decided to get baptized and um, in the Christian Church. And um, wow! And it was not too long before um, that I got married. I got married probably you know, eight months after that, which is so ironic because I was so against marriage. <laughs> and this was to a good Christian. And this was to a good Christian man. So it was kind of funny that um, it all happened the way that it did. But God, God's hand in there somewhere. Huh? Oh, absolutely. And he, he knew that he had to fix this issue that was going on. And then and then the, the mate would come, the proper mate would come. Oh, so. well, that, that's fantastic. So you've already mentioned the Bible means a little mm -hmm. bit different to you now than it did when, when you were Mormon, carrying yeah. it to church. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the Mormon Bible is, is difficult to read. I mean, they're, they're very stuck in the King, King James Version, which 
it's a beautiful poetic version of the Bible, but it, right. it is difficult to understand. And yeah. they, they kind of ingrain it into your head that it's the only true translation, which is just a bunch of bull, but whatever. <laughs> um, I guess if it keeps you from reading it, if yeah, it's better difficult, to read it, yeah. but if it keeps you from reading it. One thing that struck me after I came out was I just thought, well, you know, the, it, that was in 1611. Yeah. So it's been four or five hundred years since yeah. then. We probably learned a little bit about mm -hmm. manuscripts and other things. And Well, and there's so many words. I mean, the, the Greek language is so, it's difficult to understand anyway. Right. And it, it's it's nice to have different words that mean the same thing, but that are in there that kind of give a different angle to things. And yeah. and, and God speaks through his, the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's no right. question about that. And yeah. and if there's something that God wants you to learn, <laughs> you will learn it. Yeah. Um, and I just think that the Bible is such a beautiful uh, love story to us. And it... it, well, it that's a great way to say it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it just, it and tells... all about Jesus, huh? Yeah, and, um, and how you know, God had a plan from the very beginning to save His people. Yeah. And He saved the, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And I mean, it's just a, such a beautiful, beautiful story. And the Apostle Paul, I mean, I just, I love reading his works. And yeah. um, um, he is, he's a wonderful, wonderful Apostle. Yeah. So, um, and his message of grace did you ever understand grace as a mormon <laughs> no no <laughs> and what jesus did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves and here is a man that was persecuting jews and persecute and christ said why are you persecuting me to yeah. paul <laughs> and here is a man that turned his his life completely around and is so influ influential in the, uh, in christianity yeah um so the bible has a whole different meaning now than it did Oh, Even when I was first a Christian, I mean, I've learned yeah. so much in the 17 oh, years. You've taken Bible s studies. And Bible all studies, kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 just a beautiful walk with God, and if you stay in the Word, um, you learn things that um, is so much different on a different level yeah. that is ingrained into your soul um, that can never be taken away. Well, you you presented a little bit of a caution to to uh, to me as you you were reading or you were giving me information, and it was about what Christian or what Mormons kind of see on TV and stuff about preachers and stuff. And what kind of a caution would you give those folks to give, Mormons? Give our Mormon friends that it, who might think as they watch TV and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was young, I mean, that was the standard. It was like, oh, you know, the Jimmy Bakers and the Tammy Faye Bakers and all, you know. There's, so it does give Christian Christian preachers and pastors a, a bad name. and, and I Because think it's so visible, right? Yeah. It is so visible, but there are some really good pastors out there that know the word, that can convey the word. Right. Um, and it, you just have to look and, you know, if you know a Christian in your community or at work or something and, and ask them who they like. I mean, I don't like a lot of the particular, um, you know, preachers on TV. Right. It's not my style. Right. But there are many that... They teach verse by verse and they're mm -hmm. well read and they're well founded. And, and they're not in the theatrical um, right. drama and the mystical and all of that. It is, it's not like that at all. Um, it's a little... It's a small part of Christianity, and yeah. it's not really the message that we, no. we former Mormons want to portray because yeah. there is a joy and a liberty and a freedom that, mm -hmm. and this grace thing that just is amazing. Yeah. Now, you've taken over Heidi. She passed away of cancer. Mm -hmm. you, took, you took over a little bit of a, a ministry of hers. Well, tell us about that. Yeah, so when she, she was diagnosed with, with uh, stage 4 stomach cancer um, over, you know, three, almost four years ago, and... Um, she felt very led by the Spirit that she should start this ministry called Conversations on Hope, mm. um, which is um, just having very simple, basic conversations with people from all walks of life. Um, it doesn't have to be spiritual. Or, I mean, just whatever is helping them, whatever helped them through difficult cir mm -hmm. circumstances in yeah. life, hardships. Um, and so you interview them? And so she interviewed them and, and she has, you know, did five interviews before she passed. And I, at the time I was living in Reno and she needed someone to take over. Oh. But in God's wonderful provision, um, 
made it happen where I was moving back to Utah. <laughs> and so on really one of my last visits with her, she had asked if I would take over and I agreed. And um, it's, it's a ministry that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. And um, so, but yes, it's, it's something that I'm involved in, in, in addition to the Bible okay. studies. And, and so uh, they can go on YouTube and type in conversations on hope. Conversations on hope. Yeah. And we, it's, you know, we try to keep the interviews about 20 minutes, but it's a great way to sort of have people talk about how they get through it because we're all struggling. We're all, we yeah, all have difficulties and, and yeah. hardships and how, how do we um, get through those and then how do we help others that are get, you know, going through the same things right. that we are because we're not alone. Right. So, See, other people have experienced those same absolutely. things. Absolutely. Death of children. Yeah. cancer, you name it. You had a couple of scriptures that you wanted to share, and the one I really liked, of course, is our that First Corinthians 1 and 18. Yeah, yeah. You want to share that with us? So um, I remember in high school when uh, President Hinckley had, when he was interviewed for 60 Minutes, was asked, well, why don't... And you know his granddaughter at this uh, yes, seminary so I went to, council. Yeah, his yeah. granddaughter went to Skyline, so I knew her. Yeah. Um, but he was asked by Mike Wallace um, why cr Mormons don't wear crosses, and his response was something like, you know, we believe in a living Redeemer, a right. living Christ. Right. And, you know, at the time I cheered, I thought that was such a great response. response yeah. And now that I've become yeah. a Christian, I think, you know, the cross has such a different meaning for me. You know, oh, it means me too. life and love that yeah. God went to the cross. Um, for me, was willing to do it for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And so the, the 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 scripture that I have is the the message of the cross is foolishness foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hmm. I mean, you can't dispute that. I know it's so it's so fantastic. Well, yeah. we're just about out of time. <laughs> and as I always ask, and we talked about it earlier, mm -hmm. anything you'd like to say to family and friends? Um, to my Mormon you know, friends and family out there, um, I think that, um, you know, if you have questions, um, look into the history of the church and not just the yeah. Mormon history because it's so whitewashed and watered down and very flowery. Um, there is some really, really unsettling things about <laughs> the, the Mormon history. Beyond your seeds, right? <laughs> right. And, and I think that, um, you know, just praying to God and, and I, I, you know, I had that burning in the bosom, and it was hard for me to reconcile. Well, what, what's different now? And I just go back to the Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. We're verse. going to wrap up with this. So yes, please. Um, for such men are um, are false apostles, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. So I just think that. Jana, thanks yeah. so much. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you, Earl. See ya. Talk to you later.